It's safe to say that Hansi Slip time at Bayern Munich was absolutely incredible. The guy won seven trophies. He won the Bundesliga twice. He won the DFB Pockel, the Champions League, the DFL Super Cup, the UEFA Super Cup, and also the Club World Cup. A very impressive reign. And over this reign, he only lost seven games. Today, we're going to recreate his 4-2-3-1 inside of FM23. If you do enjoy the tactics, please do leave a like and hit the subscription button with hitting that little notification bell. But let's go ahead and get in to this tactic. So then guys, we're going to do it the same way we did in the previous video. We are going to talk about the tactic first, then go over the results. Now things are going to change from what you see here, so do stick around to see how it changes. And I'm doing this now because I can actually sort of explain why they go in each position. And it just makes the tactic a lot more sort of easy to explain and you can visualise it. So it is going to be your, your average 4 2 3 one. There are going to be three variants, so don't you worry about that. But we're going to kick things off, obviously we're originally talking about how the tactic plays. So it is actually going to feature two of the deeper DM options in this 4 2 3 one and realistically, this is going to change this DM position here to a deep line playmaker, which I'm going to explain why in a second. But this is obviously the two DMs is pretty much how he would set up. And that is the only area of this tactic, which I've had to slightly tweak in order to make it perform really well inside of FM. So yeah, the DM on this right hand side actually does get changed to a deep line playmaker on a supportive role. And he is going to be on more direct passes and tackle harder. The only real player in the team that is going to look for the more direct passes. And I think it's always crucial to have a player in that sort of role that is looking for these long balls because it's handy to have one player looking out for these runs in behind and I really do feel like in real life he probably did opt for two DMs in my opinion but on this occasion to get it to work in FM the deep line playmaker role is an absolute necessity and it works so much better than having two DMs. Up next is going to be the back line now as you can see at the moment it consists of a fullback a central defender a ball playing defender and another fullback so what we're going to say right away right from the bat is going to be. We'll start off with the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper is a nice, simple sweeper keeper on the supportive role. The fullback on the right is going to be a fullback on support. Now, I'm a big fan of this role because essentially they are still very attacking. You can see here, he is told to get further forwards. He is staying wider and he also is going to be tackling harder as well. Really aggressive fullback and it works really well. You can see here from the right-hand side up here that obviously we are going to have an inverted winger, meaning that he is going to cut in and obviously that means the fullback is going to be a perfect overlapping option on that right hand side. The two defenders, we actually opt for a central defender on the absolute default, obviously on defend, and next to him, a ball playing defender, also on defend. Now, don't get me wrong, you can obviously opt to have two ball playing defenders, but his system, from what I know personally, I wouldn't say it definitely featured two ball playing defenders in my opinion, so that is why we've gone with that. On the left hand side, we actually do change this to a wing back. We do switch up a little bit, still going to be on a supportive role, and it's still going to be simply on tackle harder. And I just noticed that having that little bit of an old a little bit of a sort of different option really did work well. He's very similar to the fullback, don't get me wrong. He's a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more pushed up. Obviously, you can see here his default would to get further forwards, and he's got to run wide with the ball anyway. So, a very aggressive back four. Fullbacks playing a really key part of this tactic. And I did forget to show you, but I will also go over the DM. Obviously, we discussed the deep line playmaker. Very important you have one DM in this system, and I would recommend keeping him on support because having him on defend is a little bit too negative, in my opinion opinion. You want a defensive midfield player on support, on pass it shorter, tackle harder, and mark tighter. So this is very opposite to what the deep line playmaker is going to be doing. They are very different roles, but having these two that are doing very different things is a perfect recipe for success. Going up the field now to the sort of three we have here, the left-hand side, the right-hand side, and obviously the centralised player. On the left-hand side, we've got an inside forward on attack, on sit narrower, tackle harder, and mark tighter. So what we're going to see here is a very aggressive winger, obviously putting in a lot of challenge Challenges, and he is going to be told to sit narrower, meaning that this wing back can overlap and make some very, very good runs. And it works exactly the same on the right hand side as well, as he is going to be an inverted winger on this occasion on attack, on sit narrower, tackle harder, and also mark tighter, meaning that the exact same scenario is going to happen on the right hand side as well. But just on the left hand side, I notice the wing back getting a lot more aggressive and a lot more involved. Now, for some reason, say you've got a better right back that goes forward compared to your left back, you can obviously sort of switch these around if you really want to but if you can I would stick to what it says and what I've got playing here because it works really really well and in the middle it's not going to be this role here we're going to change it for the advanced playmaker on attack and he is going to be told to get further forwards roam from position and also move into channels now this player is a very free Roman sort of player I believed in this occasion I actually did use the likes of where is he there he is Thomas Muller and you can see here he had quite a good season so he actually got 28 goals 
in this season. And I believe a decent amount of assists as well. He had a really, really good season, to be fair to him. And he works very well in this role. Several players can play it to a very high standard. And it is one of the roles which I think you need to make sure you've got the right player in this system. And lastly, obviously, we're not going to use a poacher. We are going to go ahead and use a pressing forward which is going to be on attack, and he is going to be told to shoot more often. But the good thing about this tactic as well is a lot of the roles your players should be able to play. Like, there's nothing too crazy in here. Usually every team has wingers that can play inside forward inverted wingers. Usually every team's got an advanced playmaker. Obviously, the only questionable one, some strikers can't play press and forward very well. So if you need to, you can change that to an advanced forward. It would still work the same, just wouldn't 100% replicate how he would play. Over to the actual team instructions then, it is going to be set around a positive mentality. In possession, we're going to have fairly wide, that's more than enough width in the team. Pass into space, again, this is definitely has got that sort of, it's not a long ball tactic by any means of the imagination, but if there is a long ball option on, we are going to find it, and I think that's completely fine to do so, because sometimes you miss out by not taking that option. We're going to focus play down the left and the right, I'm pretty sure you'd be expecting that considering it is a flick tactic. Playing out from the back, obviously a very key part of this system, and it worked really, really well shorter passing directness a higher tempo run up defense and we've actually opted on this occasion for low crosses but to be honest on whatever tactic i make unless it is purely about a tactic that is completely using a target forward you can mix this between mixed and low crosses so whatever you really prefer to be honest both would work really really well and we are going to see some of the goals now actually in a 5-0 win over leipzig in the pockle final as you can see that direct approach to originally start this play worked really really well we went out wide brought it back into the central area and we absolutely destroyed Leipzig. A great bit of play through to Komen there, who by the way again had a very impressive season. They really all did in this team. Komen touching it down there, Raum absolutely in no man's land. Through to Thomas Muller, a little bit of the press and forward actually getting utilised there. As you can see Sadio Mane winning that back and getting rewarded for it. A bit of a dodgy bit of defending there from Leipzig as Goretzka threads it through into Komen into Mane and this guy rumoured to leave in real life. That would be a massive loss for Bayern in my opinion. Again, the high press and style comes in. Super Moting on the left-hand side into Thomas Muller. What a game. Over to the in transitions tab and we're going to have counter press. As you can see there, we are a very aggressive press and style and it works really, really well. Counter when the possession has been won. You can see here, you're going to have both wing backs or I say wing backs, obviously a mixture of wing backs and full backs go forward. You've got to have obviously the left-hand side of winger, the right-hand side centralized player and also the striker getting forward. These two in the middle typically don't get further forwards and that is sort of what I want. I don't really want them getting further forwards we are actually going to be distributing the ball quickly while distributing to the center backs and taking short goal kicks now out of possession we actually went with the higher defensive line and we played some really big teams obviously in this experiment or this save should i say and we didn't we were not vulnerable at all using this high defensive line and it works really well Obviously, it's a very aggressive press and tactic. So if you can get away with playing this high defensive line as well, what you essentially have is a tactic that really makes teams feel pressured, even some of the big elite teams. So I would recommend going into games like that with the high press and line as well much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. But here is an example of how we performed against a top team using this higher line. That is right. We did also win the Champions League final, obviously in extra time. But I, to be fair, it was quite a comfortable game in the end. A 2-0 win is going to be Nabry that finally gets things off to a roll and to be fair it was only eight minutes that separated the goals and it is going to be Nabry again a direct approach and a great finish so obviously as always we are going to have three variants of this tactic and I do want to quickly thank all of the wonderful names coming down the screen right now these are either going to be existing or new Patreon members it means the absolute world to me and supports me massively you also get some really cool perks including access to all three of these wonderful tactics in one simple download you get the tactics and the videos early you get priority in the tactics and rebuild requests obviously we're now doing a fair few rebuilds as well you also get access to one-on-one tactical help and also access to the exclusive patreon giveaways you can check all of this wonderful stuff out in the description below but let's go ahead and talk about the attack and variant so with the attack and variant there are going to be a couple of changes and the first changes actually come in with the player roles and there isn't many because it already is a very attacking tactic but what does change is going to be everything remains the same which is why i'm not going to waste your time personally and go over absolutely every single one but there are going to be three changes in this and that is obviously going to be these two at the back so we've got two ball playing defenders now the one on the right sorry can't even speak does remain the same the one on the left is now a ball playing defender but he is on dribble more as well so this is going to give one of the central defenders ball playing defenders to have the opportunity to dribble up the field a little bit more 
We have a box to box on the supportive role. Obviously, them two deeper midfielders now get pushed up a little bit. So now this is a basic 4 2 3 1 formation. He's going to be on support, on dribble more, shoot more often, get further forwards, and also move into channels. And a deep line playmaker remains exactly the same, but he is simply pushed up the field. In terms of the team instructions, it is going to be an attacker mentality. We've kept everything exactly the same, but we have added on run at defense and also be more expressive with the mixed crosses because I want to be putting a variety of balls in the box now because essentially we are desperate for a goal. So however the ball gets in there, get the ball in the box. Simple as that. In terms of the transition, we're going to be looking at exactly the same, but we're actually going to be distributing it to the playmaker. So not as much of a focus to get it right to the center backs. We want to get things moving quickly. We're desperate for a goal. Get it to that playmaker. Get it into that midfield because that is where we can progress the ball very quickly. In terms of our possession, it's going to be high defensive line, the high press line much more often still prevent the short goalkeeper distribution that come out really quickly and also get stuck in is going to be selected so this is a very aggressive 4-2-3-1 not to the point of where it's going to leave you ridiculously vulnerable but i wouldn't recommend going into every single game like this yes you could use this going in against underdog teams and really small teams in your league if you want to absolutely blitz them but i would definitely still favor going in with that default and using this on the occasion you desperately need a goal over to the defensive variant then and things are going to change so i can say this right now the back line obviously is going to look very similar to the original but it is now going to feature two fullbacks both on support on stay wider tackle harder this fullback on exactly the same these two positions here remain exactly the same as the default the first two changes come in in this midfield we actually introduce both of the midfielders obviously drop back to that defensive area the first one is going to be an anchor on defend on more direct passes tackle harder and mark tighter really protects this back four and the dm is going to be on support on pass at shorter take fewer risks shoot less often tackle harder and also mark tighter so essentially two really defensive midfield players Players that are just going to protect that back line not get forwards at all really and when they do get the ball we've got one player that is going to pass it direct and then one player that is going to pass it shorter so we've got a really nice balance in terms of the wide players the inside forward remains exactly the same in terms of instructions but he's now going to be dropped in terms of a supportive role and exactly the same thing happens on the right hand side in the middle it's going to be an advanced playmaker still, but he is now going to be on a supportive role on Mark Titer, and that is it. So nice and simple, just a lot more of a resilient 4-2-3-1. And again, this is, a, this is a tactic that would work going into games like this. Say you're playing as a mid-table team, and you'll get, say you were playing as, I don't know, like Hertha Berlin or something, and you were going in against Bayern Munich. You could play this to start with and really get a feel for the game. So that is the great thing about this system. The mentality is going to be onto balanced in possession, where you're going to have standard pass into space, still focus on play down the left and the right, a shorter passing directness, still got the higher tempo, this time a little bit of time wasting coming in, back to the low crosses, obviously we're not going to be more expressive or even really have that much effort running out of the defence because we are essentially just trying to defend a game or just be nice and balanced, not really over commit players, in transition we've got to have counter press, counter slow the pace down we are trying to seal out a game obviously if you are going into a game like this at nil nil definitely tick that off and we are going to take short goal kicks to the full backs and the center backs and regarding that we now for the first time actually have the standard defensive line we've dropped back a little bit we've got the mid block into place much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution but in terms of how we done guys we done absolutely incredible with this tactic with Bayern Munich we actually won the quadruple we won the Bundesliga here very comfortably within 31 games drawing two and only losing one we also won the Champions League which we saw in that 2-0 win in extra time against Real Madrid we also won the DFB Pockel which I did show you against Leipzig in a absolute destruction of Leipzig and also won the Super Cup at the start of the season in a very comfortable game there as well so a quadruple winning season Don't Data Hub as well looks incredibly attractive over here at Bayern. 3.26 goals per game, a conceded at 0.44, a pass completion of 87.59, and shots per game coming in at over 23. In terms of the league stats, guys, there isn't much we didn't really dominate, to be honest. Most points per game at 2.79, most goals at 111, most shots for at 796, fewer shots against at 193, most possession coming in at 59, one off the big 60. We also have 
have the fewest conceded at 15 and the most clean sheets also at 21. I also did do a test on a 98 database with Bayern Munich as well just to compare how the team sort of battled off against each other and this season was incredible. You can see here we actually played 34, won 33, drew 0 and lost one game here against Stuttgart in what was a 4-3 that was so close to 100% win rate absolutely incredible. In that season, we also won the DFB Pockle against Dortmund in a 3-1 win, and the Champions League also comes back with us as we beat Liverpool 2-1 in a very, very good Champions League final, where there were three goals in 30 minutes. And slightly better stats in the Data Hub, to be honest with you, 4.18 goals per game, a conceded at 0.41, just over 26 shots a game, attacker win ratio of 76.56, and just over an 87% pass completion. But that is going to be three variants of this hand Flick 43 when broken down. Please do get commenting right now on any future managers you want to see, any formations, or any teams you want to see rebuilt. Literally comment absolutely anything. If it gets good feedback, I'll happily make the video. Your guys' support means the absolute world to me. If you guys do enjoy the, re the rebuilds, the videos, any video on this channel, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little notification bell while you're there. And yeah, I'll see you boys in the next one. Enjoy the rest of your day.